coming up five notion features that can save you hours and hours of time every week. Hi, I'm Andy, a real estate investor, notion ambassador and systemization expert. The first notion feature is a synced block, and this allows you to sync content blocks throughout your workspace. So as a quick example, I'm currently here in my productivity OS. You can download this template using the link in the description below. And throughout here, we've got a menu bar at the top. So our goals, OKRs, areas, etc. And if I click into any of these, for example, projects, you'll see that that menu bar is now duplicated at the top. So it's exactly the same. If I click into OKRs, again, it's the same. And if I was to make a change into any of these, so for example, if I was just to go and type the letter um, A here, if I then go into any of these different areas, you can see that the A is also replicated. So let me give an example of how this works. So if I press the forward slash button, we can then either type SC for synced block, or you can scroll to find it and then return. And it creates this box or this outline. And it's everything within this outline that will then be synced and that we can go and use in different places in our workspace. So let me give you a couple of examples of things we can drop into this. So we can just do some basic text. If I press return, we could also go and add, for example, a checklist. So we go to do list and then let me just go and add one more example in. So let's go and add forward slash and let's go and add in, for example, a table. So you can add all sorts of blocks in here. It can be as simple or as advanced as you want. You could add other pages in here, etc. But basically, this is now able to be copied throughout our workspace. So if I just go over to copy and sync and click on that one, you can see we've now got copied. So if I just go and press paste on my keyboard, it's now pasted that in. And we can see that if I just hover over here on the right hand side, we've got edit original. So you can see where it comes from. And then we've also got copy and sync. And if I was just to go and, for example, check that checkbox, you can see it's also reflected in the original up here. So you can use this for um, making duplicate information on the same page, but we could also put this into a different page as well, as I showed you earlier in Productivity OS. So that's the first way that you can go and save yourself time having to duplicate information, update things in multiple places, instead just used a sync block instead. The second notion feature that will save you loads of time are page buttons. And these are the ways of quickly taking action or multiple actions with the press of a button. So let me give you an example. I'm currently here in my productivity OS again, and we've got here on the left hand side a few buttons. And just to give you an example of multiple actions here, we've got a new note and notebook. And if I click on this one, we can see that it's created a new notebook here and it's created a new note. So it's done multiple things at once. Uh, for example, I can also go into projects. And then here on the left hand side, I can just click new project. So it goes and creates one page in a database and then it goes and opens that page so we can add more details. So let me give you an example how to do this step by step. So I'm currently here in an example notion page. And the first thing we need to do as always is the forward slash and then let's type button and then return. And that goes and creates this new little pop out. And then let's give it our button a name. So this is going to be new task and we can go and give it an emoji. Just click on the smiley face and then I've got here a checkbox. So I'm just going to click that one. Then we need to go and add in our steps and you can do multiple steps here. So just to keep it really simple to start off with, let's just go click add action. We want to add a page to, and then we want to go and add it to this example task database. So it's called example task database. So let's just click here, but we'll go and look it up and we can see we've got the example task database and click. We can then go and add a template and I'll show you how to do those in one of the future steps. So keep watching. We could give it uh, some form of name. We could edit another property. So for example, I could say that the status this time around is going to be not started. And I could also go and say that the person that this is associated with for this task is the person who's clicked the button or I could uh, give it to somebody else. So I'm just going to click on that one. That's all done. Click done. And we've now got our first button. So if I go and click on this one, Straight away, you can see that in the database, it's created in another line and it's assigned it to myself. So that's one example. Let me go and give you another one. So again, we want to go and add in a bit of space. So drag up, there we go. And then forward slash button. Then we can go and say, uh, give this another name. So this is a new button. And underneath, look at some of the other options. So we could go and open a page. So let's say, for example, for this task, after we've gone and created it, we then want to go and open it. So let's say this is a new task too. Uh, let's go and say that add action. Again, we want to add a page to the database, which is going to be the example task database. We want to edit the property, which is going to be status to not started. Then let's say that we actually want to open it to add more details. So we can go open page. And this time the page is going to be the new page that we've just added. So I'm going to click on that one. Great, and then done. So this time around, when we click on new task, 
it adds the details, which is not started, but it also opens it. So we, we could then go and add in some more details. So that's just a couple of examples of how you can use buttons. They can do multiple things in different databases if you wanted uh, to save you loads of time uh, in your Notion workspace. Following on from page buttons, the third feature that can save you time in Notion are database buttons. So these are ways of taking action on one or more databases at the click of a button. So let me give you an example of how this works. So I'm currently here again in that example task database. And the first thing we need to do is go and add the button property. So if I click on the little plus symbol here, I'm going to type in button to find the specific property. And then down the bottom, you can see that we've got buttons. So I'm just going to go and click on here. And that's now added it as a column. Then we need to go and give this column a name. So let's just say that this is going to be um, start, for example. So we're going to go and start that specific uh, task. And then we can give a label to these buttons. So let's just say that this is going to be called in progress. And you can see it changing in the table behind. So we now need to decide what happens when we click the button. So if I just scroll down, we've got button is clicked, add an action and click on this one. And let's just say that all we're going to do is change one of the properties. So here we've got status and we're just going to change it when it's clicked to in progress. So as simple as that. So edit this page, change it to in progress, and then let's just say that that's nice and done and go and click the cross. So just to go and show you how it works. So here we've got a current um, couple of tasks that are already in progress, so they don't do anything. But here we've got the top one, which is not started when we click in progress. And we can see that it's now changed the status to in progress. So that's pretty simple. So let's go and do a little bit more of a complicated example. So I'm going to again click on the plus, type button, scroll down to go and add the button field. This time we're going to call this one complete. And then let's also go and give the label. Let's also say that that's going to be called complete too. And we're going to do a couple of things this time round. So firstly, when we click on the button, it's going to go and change the status to done. Now we also want to go and clear the person that's associated with this task because it's now complete. So the next thing is we need to go and edit another property, person, and we're going to go and say select and then toggle and we're going to leave that blank. So if somebody's name is in there, it's going to go and clear it out. The last thing is we also go, want to go and record well, what date and time was it completed. So again, let's go edit another property. We're going to go date completed and we're going to select now. So that's going to put exactly the time when the button's pressed will be then updated in the date completed column. So if I go and click off that one, let's just say so we've worked on task one. It's Let's say that that was something that I was working on. So I was working on task one and I can now say that it's completed. So if I go and click on the complete button, you'll see that it's changed the task one to done. You'll see that the date completed is now recorded when I press the button and you can see that person has now been removed. So again, you can see that buttons enable you to do multiple things in one go at the press of just one button. So they can really increase your time um, and accuracy of what you're doing in Notion. I really hope you're getting lots out of this video. If you are, please do go and hit the like button. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks. One of the most powerful blocks within Notion are their databases. So the fourth time-saving feature I'm going to show you today are database templates. So this is the SOP hub for real estate investors template. And I'll drop a link down into the description below if you want to grab this. But if I scroll down, we can see that here we can create some new SOPs. So if I just go here on the right hand side, and click the little drop down, you can see that we've got all of these various templates. So if I went, for example, new funding SOP and clicked on this, it puts in a logo. It says that it's for funding and that I am the owner. And if I scroll down, it then also goes and loads up all of these additional tables and drop downs, um, bullet points, etc., etc. So you don't need to start from scratch. You literally have all of the information, all of the links that you need to ready to go. And then you just go and add whatever information you want to into the template. So let me show you how to do this in one of my other products. Back in Productivity OS, you'll see if I scroll down that we've got here on the left hand side a week section. And let's say that you wanted to follow one of David Allen's Getting Things Done weekly reviews. And for that, we're going to go and create a template. So here, this is access. This is the linked view to the database. So if I click the little drop down here next to new, you'll see that we've got here a new week. So this is already created, but let me start from scratch. So we want a new template and this is going to be a new week. So we'll give it a name. Let's go and add an icon as well. So I'm just going to go and quickly select in icons uh, week and we can get the little icon and select that. Then let's say underneath, we're going to want to go and cover a few things. So we can put in some headings. So the quickest way, let's say we're going to go and capture. We're going to get clear and then we're going to go and uh, plan. And I can just go and select all of those by dragging over them and then go onto the six dots, go turn into, and let's say we're going to make that heading two. 
So quite quickly, we've then gone and created these headings. And let's say that we're going to go and create a checklist. So I could just press the square brackets to create a checklist. Uh, I could also go and press the dash and then space to create a bulleted list. I could also create a table. So if I do forward slash and then table in here, we could then go and put some things we wanted to cover. So how did your week go? You could go and ask some questions, etc. So you can build out these blocks and this section of this page uh, and you can see that it says you're editing a template. Once you then finish creating all of the page information, if we then go and click off underneath new, again, let's go and click the little down arrow next to new. And then we're going to go and say, right, well, do we want to select one of these as default? So let's go and select the top one as default. Set as default and we're going to do that for all views in weeks so now when i go and click on new you'll see that not only is it filled in the details with new week and the icon but it's also gone and filled in the body of that page as well so it just helps you to save time thinking about what you need to do each week instead just go and create a weekly template in the body create a template and then you can go and just have to fill that information out for your weekly review the last notion feature to save you hours of time are repeating notion templates for databases so let's go back to our productivity os and that weekly template that we've just gone and created rather than creating a week manually we can actually use notion to create it for us so let's go and take that template that we just created so here under the new button if i click the down arrow we can see that we've got our new week here and this is our default now you'll see to the right we've got three dots so if I click on those we've also got here repeat so if I go and click on repeat we can then go and say it could be every day week month etc so if I go and click every week we then need to say well when do we want it to be done so let's say that in preparation for a new week every Sunday we're going to go and recreate this so starting today and let's say that we're going to create it at nine o'clock in the morning so let's just say 9 a.m GMT great and then save here we can now see that every week at nine o'clock this is going to use this template it's going to go and create a new record and we don't need to go and do anything for that and actually it will even go and give you a little notification to say that it's been done all you need to do is then go ahead and fill in the details so imagine that you've got regular tasks in your task database that you do say daily or weekly rather than you having to remember to create those new tasks just go and set up a weekly template or a daily template that does it for you, saving you loads of time and making sure that you need to get done everything that's on your to-do list. So there we have it, five Notion features that can save you hours of time every week. Let me know in the comments below which was your favourite and how are you going to start using this in your Notion workspace? I'd love to hear. If you found the video useful, please do go and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. I've got loads more videos like this coming up and I wouldn't want you to miss out on a single one. Other than that, thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See ya.